My name is Liss. I'm a player that's been playing with Final since Open Beta 1, and I'm fairly experienced within everything in sub finals. I have over 1k hours, and I'm considered a top light light player as well as a top controller player. Today, me and Shark will be doing a tier list. Hell yeah. All right. Let's start it off with Charge and Slam. How are, how are we feeling about Charge and Slam? And let's also tell people that when we're like placing these things, we're going to be placing them from like the mindset of of like high level ranked or like competitive mm -hmm. play, like season two ranked. So we're not gonna we're not gonna rank them based on like how fun it is or anything oh, like that. Yeah. But like yeah, how meta it is basically. So we'll start with charge and slam. Does a lot of damage. 130 every time it hits you. What's the max damage you can do? Isn't it like over 500? With the uh, charge and slam. It, it, it is like yeah, almost like above 300 ish. Like you hit all like force charges. I think it is. Yeah, which is insane. So. Charge and Slam is very strong if you're using um, double heavy because as much as you like double shield, double shield, I mean, if one shield gets one impacted, it's like that way it goes straight by light and you're kind of like just standing there while a charge, you can probably still go in and rush in. So a charge will probably be like at least an A tier, at least. Yeah. It's very strong with uh, double heavy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Now we've got the mesh shield, which I think. Is probably the best heavy specialization right now i know everyone's using the winch claw which we'll get to and i think that's really fun but i think objectively the mesh shield has got to be the best like heavy specialization what do you think i agree with the statement yeah oh I, mesh shield always been overpowered they used to have what 1200 health when it first came out yeah that's nerfed down to 800 i think right 800 yes yeah, 800 yeah yeah so has lost have has a lot of help you can automatically just like beam in and get it get away but like it's probably just still the best overall like specialization in the game as well if you're going into good heavy if they can do that little like slide thing you do a lot of outplays of that stuff and you lost stuff yeah so i think this is easily ss tier definitely like the best heavy get heavy specialization you could run <clears throat> all right but now we've got the winch claw this thing honestly is a ton of fun I don't know how much you played with it, but like playing with it with the shotguns, especially the KS23, is actually a ton of fun. Yeah. But I don't know if it's necessarily meta. Well, the only thing about Winch Call I would say will be meta is that whenever someone gets pulled after like a defib, you can pull them in and automatically just one shot them. Yeah. But I would rather have charge and slam over that because you can just do distraction and someone's clearing out like. You know what I mean? It's it you do more damage to more people because as a wider area of effect. Well, once you claw, you only grab one person and kill them, and after that, you gotta wait like what, forty seconds, thirty five seconds to even get it back. So, I'll probably put it maybe top of B. Yeah, that's maybe what I was thinking a. as well. Yeah. I w I was thinking B tier. I don't think it's yeah. quite as good as charge and slam, for exactly what you said. Like with charge and slam, you could just easily clear out like a whole area, do a bunch of damage, like completely disrupt a push. With the winch claw, I feel like it's just more situational, you know? Like, it's really good in certain instances, but in general, you'll probably use charge and slam and mesh shield, like, more effectively more often, I think. Yep. All right, so now we're on light, and this is where your expertise is going to come in because you're, like, a top five light player. Yep. So, we've got the dash. Where, what do you think about the dash? Because I actually haven't used this very much. I, I mostly use Invis. So the dash has been really, really strong. It is very, very strong for players that are using double barrel, of course, XP, and then, of course, like, fry knives. So the thing about the dash is the fact that, yeah, you can move quickly about it, but you can still, if you're going into a very good player, that can easily track or, you know, stuff like that. Inside, like, a building, you turn the dash, you can get a couple of walls, and it's not really useful there. I yeah. will probably put a uh, dash at this moment probably around B tier only because uh, there's not a lot of like usefulness for the, for the dash only because like it's good outside but if you're going against a really good player they're just easily gonna like track you and stuff like that. It's it's just a very like mid tier type of specialization for light. Yeah, that's kind of how I've always felt about it, which is why I've mostly run the invis which we'll get into in a second, but I think that's a good place for the dash. But now we have the grapple. And to be honest, I'll, I'll admit this. When I first started playing the finals, 
I used the grapple over everything when I was first playing light because I just love the movement. And I think the I think the grapple like fun wise is is like one of the most fun gadgets in the game because like just being able to like zip around or just like grapple out of a fight is 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 pretty sick. But I I kind of wish it had two charges. I feel like it's yeah. it's kind of being held back by the one charge and kind of a long cooldown. Yeah, it's like thirty seconds cooldown. It's it's pretty large. It is very yeah. Cool. Yeah, I would say personally, this would probably be like D tier. What do you think? D tier, yeah, D tier. I agree yeah. with the statement. Yeah. Cool. All right, so now we've got cloaking, which uh, depending on how we rate this, well, it actually doesn't matter. We're we're gonna have half of the people watching this hate us, and the other half of us agree with us, because the, the community is pretty split when it comes to cloaking. Some people think it's like completely OP, and then like other people are asking for it to be buffed because it's been nerfed so much so personally i would probably put the cloaking at least s tier if not ss what do you think i would put it s tier um pre-nerfed uh cloak i would put it s s tier only downfall Belva cloaking at this moment is the fact that is the activation charge. It's like 35%. So once you use it, you only have maybe about 20, 25 seconds on cloak and you can't spam it anymore. So if it goes under half percent and you're trying to activate it, it's you're only going to be able to use your cloaking for about 7 to 10 seconds. So now the cloaking device is a little more harder to use. So you have to be more useful. Like you have to conserve it way more and know what you're doing. And because back in the day, you could just basically just spam and do whatever you can and get out of like really, really, really risky situations. Now with a new cloaking device, you really can't do that. You have to actually think about what you're doing. Say, if I cloak now, will I be able to get out? Because I cannot cloak, I cannot spam it as much as I can when I used to be, uh, when, when before it was nerfed. So at this moment, I feel like S tier, but it's, yeah. uh, it's still very strong. It's just a fact you just got to know when to use it, how to use it, and to conserve it. Because if you don't conserve it, you can easily die and, and boom, and your team has to go get you across from the, you're across the map. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And that activation charge, that actually, that's like such a major nerf because if you get shot even once or like if you do any action, you get taken out of invis. So you could be running away and just get shot once in the leg and then have to like pop your invis again. And like by then you're pretty much just out of it because you just activated yep. it twice. Yeah. Cool. All right. So moving on, the data reshaper, or not the data reshaper, the dematerializer for medium. This is where I've got a little more experience. I know you've you've got a ton of hours in the game, so you'll definitely be able yeah. to add to this. But I've I've been using the dematerializer basically since it's since it's come out. And to be honest, this gadget or this specialization is like my favorite thing in the entire game because the way that you could just like completely outplay people is insane like a good dmap player is like super scary to play against um although is it as good as maybe like the heal beam uh probably not so personally i would say it's probably probably on the bottom end of s tier maybe a tier what do you think i think above uh e tier at least and s tier yeah yeah bottom s tier yeah above yeah bottom s -tier. Because a good DMAP player that has a gunny and knows a map inside and out, that is scary. Yes. Very, very scary. It's so hard to kill them. They can just get away, like, so consistently. If you play a lot of DMAP and you know the map inside and out, you can go areas where you can probably get little, like, little angles inside buildings, and that shit can be so huge. Just Most of you as well, if you have reason, like, anything like frag grenades or any type of, like, gas canners, just throw that, that inside, do a bunch of poke damage, your team can just go in and just melt them down it will be insane yeah no i definitely agree but now we've got the heal beam which i don't think we even need to talk about this is easily ss tier, SS -tier. Yep. yeah i mean the heal it, what's honestly what's crazy to me about the heal beam is that it stacks so if you have two healers you're getting like twice the healing which is insane like that if you do double medium healer on a heavy with a mesh shield like the the heavy basically can never die if they're if they're actually a good heavy. What do you think about that? Um, 
Yeah, I agree with that statement. Most of the time, whenever you're running double heal beam, most of the time you have one person constantly healing and one person half healing and half shooting because you have you can do all the damage, but at the same time, heavy also needs help worth doing damage because you can't do all the damage by himself. You know what I mean? True, so, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, heal beams is probably, if not, of the hardest gadgets to master only because you have to focus on healing and shooting and you have to find a medium between both of them and that is very very hard if you're a new player yeah no that's it's one of the most difficult things you could do because you could you could find yourself healing too much and then you're not helping the team output enough damage especially if the other team also has a healer you know you know like your heavy like you just said won't be able to do all the damage so if you're not shooting enough you know, your team's going to lose no matter how much you heal. So yeah, I agree. Yep. All right. God, I don't think we even need to talk about <laughs> this. <laughs> Remove it. Remove it. it. Take it out. <laughs> the turret is so horrible. And, and, and I'll say why. Like, there's, there's multiple things I hate about the turret. Number one, it doesn't despawn when the, the team wipes, which is super yep. annoying. What's also annoying is if I'm playing light, like we talked about earlier, if I'm playing Cloak, if I get shot once, I get taken out of Invis, and I have to pop it again, and I basically run out of Cloak instantly. And I swear, these turrets will be all over the place, just randomly shooting me out of Invis. Like, it is horrible, because they'll lock onto you, and if you if you try to pop Invis, like, as they're locked onto you, they'll keep shooting you, you know? Yep. So, it is ridiculous. Not to mention, like, why would you run the turret when you've got the heal beam honestly like there's there's no reason to do that maybe if you already have a healer but even then i think two heal beams is still better than a heal beam in a turret fair enough but like hey man what about the, the chair and the turret man see a guy <laughs> on the turret, bro. That's, that's scary business right there bro <laughs> you know what boots, bro. that is that is actually kind of scary i i will not lie i've run into a few people that have put like two turrets on like a barrel or something like that and yeah, just run around yeah. Dude, you know what, what? What's crazy about it is that the turret has so much HP. Like, I don't know how much HP it has, but I feel like it has about the same health as a medium. I think it does. I think, I think it has like yeah, 250. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically a fourth player on the other team. And it's just frustrating because it's, it's something that takes like no skill. And it actually takes like a good amount of work to take these turrets out. You know, depending on like what gun you have as well. Like if you're if you're on a heavy with a shotgun, like you're not taking that thing out from far. You have to get right up in its face. Um, so it's just like a no skill, like cheesy gadget, in my opinion. I, I don't think it should be in the game. Also, one thing about the turn as well, if you're a light, if you're channeling a uh turret, ninety percent of the time that thing will get you to less than half HP because it does so much damage. Yeah. So much damage, bro. Yeah, I think it's like ten damage a hit, right? Yep. Yeah, it's insane. And like, I, I was actually ranting about that in one of my videos the other day. I, I was just ranting about how the turret, because I was playing light and I was getting shit on by turrets. And I was like, you guys don't understand, like, if I go if I go to take a 1v1 fight as light, it's like hard enough for me to win that because I have such low HP, especially if I'm against a good player. So if, if I start shooting him and I've got a fair 1v1 and then a turret's also shooting me, I just basically lose. All right, but moving on to the mines, I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty sure this one is an explosive mine. I think this is a glitch mine, and I think this is a gas mine, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so we're just gonna assume that that's what they are. Unless, do you know the difference? I'm pretty sure the last one is a glitch mine, the first one is a gas mine, and the second one is a explosive mine, I'm pretty sure. Wow, so I got all three wrong. Cool. All right. Well, so this is an explosive mine, right? Pretty sure, yeah. All right, so we're just going to assume it is. All right, so what do you what do you think about the mines in general? Because personally, I'm already wanting to remove it. I would say this. If you're a player that just runs in, like me, and don't care about anything, bro, you're going to hit mines. I hate them. But I have seen some crazy, crazy plays with mines, dude. Like back in the day, there used to be a flamethrower guy with, uh, with explosive mines. He would throw the explosive mine on the ground and flamethrower them, bro. And that shit used to do huge damage. So that's actually pretty sick. Yeah, it just do. It's it's pretty good. It just depends how you use it. But at the same time, it's it's not good. 
it's not good. Yeah. Uh, in high tier plays, wait, in high tier, wait, wait, high in high tier plays, it's not very useful and stuff like that. So I would say honestly, for the explosive mine, just remove it. If not at that point, prep it at D. Yeah, no, I agree. Like my problem with the explosive mines in particular is that I feel like the finals is so fast paced that it's it's almost impossible to not hit the mines, especially when they yeah. don't despawn after a team wipes. And you can bring two mines. Uh, w like when you run explosive mines, you get two of them, as far as I know. Yeah. So, and you can run three sets of mines. So y you could have like six mines that you, that you have thrown out all over the map. And I swear to God, like, and you've and you've started to see it this season as well. Like, I feel like I'm just playing like in a minefield, constantly. How many times have you seen me 1v3 a squad just for me to die to a fucking mine event? Yeah, kill kill the whole team and then like jump out of the window to go res and blow up. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why. Like last season, I don't remember seeing a single mine. Maybe only because I was Diamond 1 and was playing against very good players at the time. But like now coming back to the game and playing season 3, there's just so many mines. I just don't understand why. Yeah, honestly, I think we'll put the mines at F tier. Yeah. Only, or at least the explosive mine, only because, like, as much as I want to remove it, I feel like it has its place in the game for, like, yeah. the cash outs. Because setting up mines on the cash out is, like, legitimately a viable strategy, in my opinion. Like, yeah, you can just shoot them off or whatever. But if there is no time left and you've got gas mines on the point, like, that's going to help you win. So, yeah. in that in that aspect, like, I don't think the mine should be removed for, like, Man, do I just hate running into mines, bro. Yep. All right, so gas mine. Honestly, I think like I think like the same thing like D or F. I'll say probably I don't know, what do you think? D tier? I would say I would honestly put up the same tier as F. I yeah, I think F. Yeah. But the gas mine as much as it's like cool and all, right? The only time I can see you using it is if you pop in there with a cash out and you're about to steal it, or like the cash out's about to be like maybe 30 seconds, so you shoot your gas mine. So, because the gas lingers around like 30 seconds and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. the only news you can probably have it. So, other than that, I don't see any viable abuse in the game for the gas mine. Yeah. All right. But what about the, the glitch mines? Because I've been seeing a ton of these and like. I, I don't know if like I, I never understood how they worked, but I felt like they changed how they worked where like when you go near them you, you get like electrocuted or whatever it is and you can't use anything i thought before like you just ran over it and it was like a like a uh oh. glitch mine or like glitch nade i'm pretty sure that's a different uh thing because they also came out with some new new gadgets remember that i'm pretty sure they still have glitch mines but they also have that thing i know what you're talking about it's like oh the, really i didn't uh, even know yeah, I think it's the shock like thing. You know how we keep going near the cash out, so you can't use it. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, huh. okay. Well, that's news to me. Yeah, because I, I never thought that the glitch mines worked like that. Well, in that case, I think they'll probably these will probably go in F tier. Whatever that gadget yeah. is, though, honestly, I'd put that in like C or B tier. B. Yeah, agree. yeah. That that thing is like actually insane. All right. Next up, though, zipline. I'm thinking S tier. I'm gonna go SS. Gotta go SS. SS. It is you know, any type of movement things. Mediums always has to run movement. If you're running two two mediums, one has to run zipline, one has to run JP. But at all times, you're using if it's one medium, gotta run double double movement. Yeah. Jump pad and zipline. It is <clears throat> because it's the fastest way. As soon as you die after like a cash out, you gotta go fa as fast as can as uh, fast as possible to cash out. Stuff on the JP will get you there as fast as you can. True. All right. Next up is the sonar nades, and this is something that I think we both feel is pretty underrated. What do you think? Yes, underrated. I feel like it was a little bit too strong at the beginning of the season, season three, because it because terminal attack kind of made a meta because it gave you a lot of info. But even after like a five meter nerf, it's still very very good. Mm hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I would probably put this in like. A tier? A tier, yeah. Yeah. What, Which, like, what is this? 
Oh, that's gas. That is. Oh, this gas, is a gas mine. Gas grenade. Yes, that's okay. gas grenade. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I've never used. Can you tell I've never used half these gadgets? <laughs> uh, actually, hello. Is that is a? That? I don't know if that is a gas grenade. I think this is or this. No, 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 no. So the gas grenade. What is that? That's not. That's not. That's not a pyro. Because pyro is a one to right? If that's a fraud. That's a glitch. Is that a goo, right? I, but, no, that's hop, that's I'm not about, good. I'm about to hop on the game. Hold on, we gotta make sure about this real quick. Hold up. Yeah, load up and tell us, cause I actually Look, have no idea what that is. I'm just so honest, if you bro, some of the some of the stuff, I don't even don't even know how they look like. <laughs> I'm gonna be so honest with you, because I know like, pyronade has a little gas inside, and you get a frag grenade, frag glitch, and then the the only way for you to tell, I think it's by the. A little Top tag. That's a little, a little tag. Yeah. A yeah. Little tag. Okay. Well, figure out what that is, and then I guess we'll just have to randomly assign whatever we think those are. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got you. If you want to go ahead, we can go the jump pad real quick. That's why I figure that thing out real quick. All right. Well, like you said earlier, jump pad, SS, anything SS. movement, top tier. So that's pretty simple. Um, not much to say about that. Defibs. Also SS. I think, SS. yeah, even with the nerf, honestly, that was well-deserved because the, the insta reses were kind of insane, especially, like, during the recon meta where everyone was triple medium and, like, healing, or, like, you have, like, one healer and you're, you're just fighting, like, these two mediums getting healed and, like, one goes down and he instantly gets back up. It was, it was actually insane. Oh, no, I'm wrong. They did change with the glitch pad really yeah they did so actually we're actually i'm actually wrong yeah because oh. i was gonna say i didn't i, I didn't remember yeah. reading about a new gadget like that well in that case what do you think like b tier for that for the glitch mines oh uh, yeah b tier i agree with, i think we changed it to the b tier yeah that is very very strong most inside like a, a building so if you're inside a building, that means you cannot dome, you cannot, you know, you cannot heal, you cannot do anything if you're inside the range of that. And it has a good range. I think it's like seven, eight meters, something around there. The range, the range, range is pretty crazy. If you're inside, yeah. like if you're inside a room, it's hitting you, you know, and it hits like everybody and it does not go away until you shoot it, which I think is like the main reason why it's so good. Okay, so the first thing I'm seeing yeah. right there. It's actually a gas grenade. Really? Okay. Yes, it is actually a gas grenade. Cool. I was speaking about that on a personal note. So the gas grenade a lot. Uh, I used to use it. I was actually very known for the gas grenade back in season uh, one because I used to see a lot of outplays in season one with gas grenades. I will put it, I think, A tier. It has a lot of like outplay ability, mostly for cash outs as, as a light. Uh, it lasts about 30 seconds, so there's a lot of like what's it called? damage over time. And yeah. I think I'll put it over A. Do you get two of them? Because I've never used uh, you them. Get, no, you only get one. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. All right, yeah, I agree with you, what you said. I mean, I've never used it, so I don't really have experience with it. So, moving on, what do we want to call this? The Goonade? I'm pretty I'm looking at that right now. This one looks a little bit different than the other ones. Uh, yeah, that is actually... A goonade, I'm pretty sure. Cool. So I got one of them right, at least. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right, goonade, man. You know, I remember, I remember people were like running goonades for a little while, and I was hearing that like they were actually pretty good. Um, I've never really used them myself, but what do you what do you think about the goonade? Have you used it before? Um, I'm gonna be so honest with you, no, but. From people, so back in the day, I think remember beginning of season two, people did use grenades for a little bit. It was meta for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was was meta at one point. Um, I guess just for that, we probably put it like C tier. Uh, I'll put it D. There's not much like use for it because uh, at the same time you have a bunch of goo goo canisters all goo over the place. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. All right. Oh boy. Now we've now we've got the. The data reshaper, probably one of the worst gadgets in my opinion. I think I think the idea is pretty cool, 
but i think bringing it over one of these other gadgets kind of isn't worth it what do you think yeah i agree but true fact about the gallery shaper so if you're actually inside a dome right like an enemy dome or a turret you can go up to it and change it to like an actual like output which is actually really cool even i think you can do it on a barricade but i'm not 100 percent sure i think you couldn't but if you could if you could do it on a barricade that's actually crazy because those things are like indestructible yeah all right i'm pretty sure you could but i could be wrong cool um what do you think like d tier just kind of yeah, a niche a item yeah yeah all right glitch nades now again we'll, we'll use your expertise for this what do you okay. think about glitches now glitches so i'm gonna say this once this once only the glitch grenades during season two were probably the best thing ever it lasted 10 seconds and it went on impact and it can go through your teammates uh like dome shields and shields so i have because ever since that they kind of nerfed because people complained so now it's around five seconds and you can't throw it through uh your own teammates like shields and but still it goes an impact i would say pre-nerfed it would go s s tier but at this moment it's what would go s but i would say this if you have a good light that's playing glitch grenades and knows how to use it it can be it's a break a breaker or a make it moment mostly for lights because your your job as a light is to go in to get info and then throw glitches so your team can come in and just basically just kill everything your glitches are your best friend as a light player yeah so <clears throat> be an s tier for sure because your glitches is what you, if you want to learn how to play light learn how to master the glitches once you learn how to master the glitches you'll be such a good light man uh, all right so now we've got the grenades which personally i would put an s tier i know maybe they're not always the best pick there might be another gadget that's like worth taking instead but like with my play style of like d mat f car you know double movement a lot of the time running nades like mm -hmm. i pick up so many kills with the nades um so i'd probably i'd probably put it at least a tier if not s tier what do you think yeah i agree with that we'll give you that well cool. yeah we'll put it as true all right what is this do you know i'm pretty sure that is a flashbang yeah flashbang okay oh boy flashes man honestly the fact that you can flash your teammates makes these like super bad like remove it really bad remove it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> krampus krampus yes oh, dude he, i'm dude. trying to get my challenges <laughs> meanwhile i can't see anything mm -hmm. all right what is this that's a pyro gun oh now i see it yeah okay yep. pyronate oh my god this thing's horrible <laughs> the pyronate is really bad really really bad yeah, yeah. I, I, honestly it, i wouldn't say remove it probably just need to buff it if anything but i'd probably put it f tier f tier i agree with the same yep. yeah yeah that's that, really really bad that I don't thing see is any horrible it. <laughs> you might as well just run gas nades yeah or frags. I mean, actually the beginning of the game i actually used to run pyro grenades because i thought they were good but then i realized that there's like it doesn't like no damage if you do like maybe 50 damage max you throw it on top to somebody it's really really bad yeah yeah meanwhile you could do like 150 with the nade yep 150 they're sitting right on top of it yeah all right so what did we miss what is this <laughs> i cannot even keep up i'm pretty sure that is a smoke grenade yep smoke grenade. smoke grenade um well you're you're more of like a thermal player so what do you think like smokes and thermals is that a strat oh uh, nope no i don't even nope nope I, like you never pick up any like smokes at all like smokes do nothing i mean yeah, I don't even think they even have like a big area of effect either. I think it's very, very small. So, and plus, yeah, I don't see anyone just throwing a smoke grenade to see something because, you know, yeah. yeah. So, I think, honestly, remove it or just put it over the. Honestly, the yeah. I, I would say remove it. I, I kind of agree with you. It's just, it's pretty useless yeah. in my opinion. But. I feel like removing things we should try to we should try to like not remove things if we can and i feel like the yeah. smoke grenade something where like if it's in the game i'm not annoyed playing against a smoke grenade you know so i feel like they just it needs like a good buff just like the pyronade 
But now we've got the gateway, which man, I think I think is SS. What do you think? SS. Yeah, yeah, definitely. SS. It is Gateway's so, so good. good. Yeah. So good. 75 meters, bro. Just pop it down. Plus, if you're for some odd strain reason, your mediums don't have any of a movement, you got a gateway and you put it on top as well. You do some very, very quiet cool plays. Like once where I told you, you were, you accidentally fell. I think it was yesterday you fell. I was during uh, Monaco and I threw a gateway down to you and I told you I was going to put you on top of them. And yes, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that, that can do some really great outplays because your enemies will never expect it, dude. It is insane. It, it's so much stuff for gateway. Yeah, no, the, the gateway is definitely, like, one of the best things they've added to the game. I think Season 2 was great, man. Like, you got the Dematerializer, you got the gateway. Like, you had so many, like, just really good things added. All right, now we've got the Tracking Dart. Um, I mean, it does track you for a long time. But honestly, like, I feel like this thing's kind of useless. What do you think? Yeah, I mean... I I will I will probably choose the cylinder grenade over the tracking dart. To be honest with you, wider area of effect plus it's only one person. So yeah, yeah. I mean, the only benefit you can get from a tracking dart is like what having it for like what an extra five seven seconds when you tracking dart them. That's, yeah, that's basically all, and it's not used to it any longer. I would put probably put in a D tier probably. Yeah, I was gonna say D or F tier for sure. We'll we'll be generous. Put it in D tier. All right, now I think this is breaching charges, or is this breaching charges? Mm, I think the smaller one's breaching oh, charges. So, so that, so, so that I have no idea what that is. But the third <laughs> one is breaching charges. I'm trying to find out which one that is real quick. This is probably the C4 then. No, the third one's C4. Oh, I thought you said the third one was breaching charges. No, no, there's no such thing as breaching charges in this game. Yeah, there is. There is? Yeah. <laughs> For light. No, that's C4 still. No, it's called something different. I, sw I swear it's called breaching charges. Do you have the game open? Yeah, I do. Oh, wait, it is called breach charge. Wait, I was what? right. I told you. What? No, bro. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay, I, okay. So, yeah, that's... That is, yeah, the first thing is breach and charge. Not breach yeah. and charge. It's actually it's it's yeah, breach and charge, yeah. <laughs> okay. Alright. Well breaching charges, I'm pretty sure they do significantly less damage to uh players. It's it's literally just meant for walls. So with that I mean as a light, you're gonna be never gonna be using it. I'm like yeah. never gonna be using it. So I would say Alright D. Yeah, not, not even D, probably F tier. F, yeah. I don't see any use with it like at all. Nothing. All right, now we've got. What, what is this? It's thermal. Oh, thermal. <sighs> yeah, I've used this one time. I hated it. All right, well, so right. you're you're a thermal player. So talk about thermal. Yep. Thermal is probably the most underrated like gadget in the game it is very useful if you're going against a light player it is a must need to be doing cloak because it's basically just saying who who can see each other first and invis and who has a better aim because most of the time whenever it's a three a, a fair three v three against two light players it is who has who has better positioning who has better aim and who can see each other first on thermal Thermal, I would my personal feel would be an S tier because it is a little bit broken from season one. They haven't really patched it. They have to be behind, they have to be behind like a certain area, like a wall, or something like that. After like an area where it's far back, you don't like, have infinite open. range. Yeah, this, I mean, yeah, I think a range on it too. I think it's like forty meters. It's very, it's very, very small. But like sometimes you can get lucky and you can see like an outline for more than like. 50 meters away. It's very, very cool. So you can get like very good long shots on people. So yeah, yeah. A thermal is a must need, mostly in a 3v3 if you're going a light player. You're gonna need, you're gonna need to use it. That and I think for TA, it's it's a lot better as well since like everybody's running light. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, now we're on to the C4. Finally, C4. I'm thinking like S tier. A tier? What do you think? Yes, S tier. So I would put it in S S tier before it was nerfed because you basically got two and I did what two hundred damage. 
Yeah. Plus, as well, it's stacked with damage of RPG, but now because it, I don't think it stacks anymore, you only get one per, like, minute and a half SS, but still has a very, very good, like, destruction rate as well. It has a blast radius of, like, I think seven meters, which is still very insane. So, yeah. yeah. And plus, like, the cash out plays, like, is, uh, if you're playing as a heavy, your main objective, most he has, like, a heavy player, is playing your C4 for cash out. Mm -hmm. So. I'll put that next year. Cool. All right. The dome shield. I'm immediately thinking SS. What are you thinking? I agree with SS. Yeah. The dome shield is probably, if not, it's the second best gadget in the game, in my opinion. That for like heavy, it is like a must need. Yeah, uh, you, I agree. You throw it down. That has what? I think they recently nerfed it, so it has less damp, less less health now. I think it has like 200 health. That that's very very small now. But, like, it's just the fact that those couple, like, two, three seconds, when you put it down, you can just look back and shoot at your enemies, and you don't take a single inch of damage is insane to me. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it all comes down to, like, the time to kills. And if somebody, if I'm on medium playing F-Car, and someone drops down a dome shield, it's basically my entire F-Car mag to destroy the dome shield. And at that point, I have to reload just to do any damage. And that whole time, that heavy can be shooting at me. So it's it's kind of like a time to kill thing. Like if the heavy can start shooting and do damage to you before you even start doing damage to him, then the gunfight's basically won at that point. Yep, I agree. Mostly with uh, recent F F car nerfs as well, cannot be made heavy as fast. Because nope. Most of the uh, heavy's weapons as well have way more faster TTKs than like medium weapons now. Oh yeah, I swear yeah. the Lewis gun is like prime F car. It just has. Bad recoil and iron sights. Very, very, very bad recoil. But <laughs> the Lewis player is very scary. Yes. It's a master, bro. If somehow he finds this video, we still love you, bro. But one of the best Lewis players I ever know of, bro. That guy was scary. <laughs> All right. Uh, motion, motion tracker, motion dart, motion, whatever the hell for light. Very annoying. Very yes. annoying. Very but, annoying, but is it really that good? Like, would you really no, use it over gateway or thermal or glitches? No, 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 no. Yeah. Actually, so I would say if you put it in a good spot, right, you're not going to notice it. I would put it actually in a, I'll put it in C tier. I've seen some great, great plays. Mostly if you put it in the corner of like a building, mostly near cash out, stuff like that. It can do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Really, really can. Because most of the time, mostly if it's in a dire situation, you're not going to be lucky and for this you're gonna be actually just gonna try go in you know either kill your opponents or either try to get the cash out so yeah i think i think c here is a good slow spot to it i think it's a very a very underrated gadget in my opinion yeah i think that's fair also we've, we've got nothing in c so that's our first yeah. first gadget in c tier but we're on the last item now maybe we'll have some join the c tier grav cube i'm yeah. actually not gonna lie to you grav cube hmm I don't know. It's it's a very strange gadget because it could be so good yet so bad at the same time. It's because there's so many ways you can use it, like clearing out the doorway, right, or just putting up the the, the cash out last second so it goes up in the air. But other than that, it's I don't see any good usefulness. I barely see anyone good use it at all. It's very underrated in my opinion. So just depends how you want to use it. I will actually put it in C tier in my opinion. Yeah. Just add it there. You know. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking too. I've seen some really good heavy players use the grav cube, like specifically like indoors for gunfights, and they'll just throw it at the other team, and it like completely messes up their aim and everything. I, like I've seen some really good players do some crazy stuff with it. But I feel like it's it's just not worth taking over some of the other gadgets. It's and I, I feel like it's also kind of like a a fun gadget, more of like a troll gadget. Yeah, I agree with that segment. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, that was uh, our tier list for all of the gadgets and specializations in the finals. What do you think? We did a pretty good job? Yep. I think this is like from a competitive to a high ranked player in the finals. I think this is a fair, like a fair rated tier list in my opinion. Well, we'll see how the comments see uh, what we did here because last time I made a tier list video, people got really upset. <laughs> people got really, really mad. So we'll see. Hopefully, they don't get too mad at us, but cool. All right. Well, I appreciate you uh, helping with the tier list, bro. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome.